if a non-spirit-filled, unregenerate man recognizes the dangers of the implementation of Marxism in a society in order to remove their freedoms, why aren't the believers speaking up? If more pastors stood on these principles and chose to fight for the things that were right, we would not see the kind of garbage that we are witnessing right now in our midst. Complete cowards that are not willing to stand up and to fight. And you know what these cowards are hiding behind? They're hiding behind another lie of the enemy, and that is, I just want to preach the gospel. It's a lie of the enemy, because the very thing that you say you just want to preach is incomplete when you pick and choose what you want to communicate. Lithium refining capacity will be the EV choke point. Electric vehicles will not be able to function because of the lack of of lithium refining capacity. It's not the fact that they're not gonna find enough lithium, it's their ability to be able to refine the lithium they say is gonna become the choke point. I've got a bigger choke point for you. How about the electrical grid? There's a bigger choke point. How about the fact that we can barely keep air conditioners on when it gets hot and we're asking people to stop using their appliances and we're having rolling blackouts and yet you wanna take away every single vehicle that utilizes fossil fuel so that you can implement the use of electric vehicles because you think somehow, some way it's gonna make the environment better? First of all, you destroy the environment way worse mining for electric vehicles in order to put together the batteries and you do anything else. The carbon, so-called carbon footprint that you leave is far more destructive than anything you could possibly imagine. The very process of charging those batteries can actually leave major problems for the environment. Anybody who has any familiarity with lithium polymer technology knows the kind of things that you have to do in order to maintain a secure and safe environment while in the process of charging those things. You have a light bulb battery explode? Take a thousand styrofoam cups and put it in the fire and it's less damaging to the environment. So let's get real about what we're actually talking about here, folks. Let's actually tell the truth. The truth is, we know how to make a hydrogen cell, a little tiny box that you can stick inside a motor vehicle that would keep it fueled on water, never having to be refilled throughout the tenure of the history of the vehicle. You could eliminate gas altogether by implementing that, but they'll never let that happen. Better than any electric vehicles? Better than anything like that. But electric vehicles are the new propagandist mechanism being utilized by the left because they know that totalitarian regimes will be able to extend the capacity to shut down the use of those vehicles when they want people to stop traveling. And one of the most effective ways to eliminate a person's freedom is to eliminate their movements. Why do you think they're talking about these 15-minute cities, folks? Food, medicine, education, and leisure, all within a 15-minute walk or cycle. Are 15-minute cities feasible? I call it the 15-minute city. We need to build cities where everything you need is 15 minutes away. You want to know why? Because they want to keep you in your cage, like a little experimental rat, so that they can jump into their private planes and fly anywhere they want, do anything they want, and rule over you. They want to take away your ability to be able to move freely. They want to stick you on an island where you'll get ready in your incapacity to be able to process what's happening around you, to kill each other, and they are beginning to develop and build their Neo-Malthusian empire. That's exactly what we're seeing right now. If you think I'm wrong about this, stop for a moment and take a look at what's going on. Wake up and smell the coffee. If you think I'm wrong about this, go look at some of the public memos that have been produced by this current regime begging Elon Musk to shut down Teslas in Russia. Elon Musk wisely so said, get lost. I'm not opening up the door for your totalitarian desires to implement a mechanism that removes any kind of freedom that exists within society. Why do you think he bought Twitter for $42 million? To lose $20 million overnight? I think he's fighting an ideological war. I think he recognizes the destructive effects of cultural Marxism. And although his solutions might not be the most trustworthy, were the solutions that are out there, at least he's recognizing it. Now imagine this, if a non-spirit-filled, unregenerate man recognizes the dangers of the implementation of Marxism in a society in order to remove their freedoms, why aren't the believers speaking up? We're filled with the spirit of God. Why aren't we seeing it? Some of you are like, oh, James, you're being too loud. Can't you just calm down and speak a little more clearly? I got a proposition for you. Imagine your kid being put in front of a vehicle and that vehicle coming at your kid at 80 miles an hour. Are you gonna just very calmly and softly, oh honey, come here baby, come here. No, you're not. You're gonna yell at the top of your lungs and you're gonna run as fast as you can towards that child and you are gonna do everything you can to push that child away from clear and present danger that is going to take their lives. If more pastors 
stood on these principles and chose to fight for the things that were right, we would not see the kind of garbage that we are witnessing right now in our midst. The problem is we have a series of cowards, complete cowards that are not willing to stand up and to fight. And you know what these cowards are hiding behind? They're hiding behind another lie of the enemy, and that is, I just want to preach the gospel. It's a lie of the enemy because the very thing that you say you just want to preach is incomplete when you pick and choose what you want to communicate. The gospel involves a big picture. Yes, Christ and him crucified, buried, risen again, coming to our hearts, regenerating us, renewing us, rebuilding us. But did you forget about Romans chapter 12? Did you forget about the reasonable sacrifice? Did you forget about the obligation that sets forth in front of us to be able to speak the truth at all costs? 